In this video, I'm going to be going over the basics of incompressible flow. There are two methods of study of incompressible flow. The first is the Lagrangian method, where you follow a fluid particle over time and you measure the parameters at each time step. The second method, and the method that we will be using, is the Eulerian method. And in this method, you have a control volume. You have an inlet and an outlet on this control volume. And you measure the parameters of the fluid at the inlet and at the outlet. This method requires an assumption of steady flow. Steady flow requires the conservation of mass. In our case, that means that the area of the inlet multiplied by the density and the velocity of the fluid at the inlet must be equal to the area of the outlet multiplied by the density and the velocity of the fluid at the outlet. If we look at the units of the area, density, and velocity, we can put them into the equation above and simplify to find that the mass per time in must be equal to the mass per time out. Before I go over the two equations which govern incompressible flow, I recommend that you review basic calculus and ensure that you understand integrals and differentials. The first equation which governs incompressible flow is the continuity equation in integral form. As you can see from the first part of this equation, there is a differential with respect to time. Now in our assumption of steady flow, we are assuming that over time the flow will not change, and therefore by definition the flow is steady. Under this assumption, since the flow does not change with time, the differential with respect to time takes the left part of the equation and sets it to zero, leaving us with the simplified continuity equation. We can expand this equation as we will be assuming a 2D example for our continuity equation. And in this case, the flow will be traveling through a duct from the left to the right of the screen. The y-axis will be up and down along your screen, and the z will be in and out of the screen. We will be assuming that the duct is symmetrical along the z-axis and that there are no changes along that axis. Under this assumption, the z part of the interval simplifies, leaving us with only the width in the z direction of the duct. And in our case, it will be a unitless quantity and it will simply be equal to 1 as we are doing only a 2D example. We will also be assuming that the density along the inlet and along the outlet are constant. This is not an assumption of incompressibility as of yet. We are simply assuming that there are no pockets of different densities along the inlet or along the outlet. When we make this assumption, we can take the density out of the integral to simplify it. This leaves us with our finalized 2D equation. Going over the simplified continuity equation, we have the density of the fluid the width of the duct, in our case, which is equal to 1, a unitless quantity. We have the velocity vector, and we have the normal vector of the control surface. This is an example of a control volume. On the left, you see the inlet, which is a control surface, and on the right, you can see the outlet, another control surface. The two solid lines are called walls, which are surfaces in a control volume that do not allow flow through them. The normals of all of these surfaces are always pointing away from the control volume and perpendicular to the surface itself. Here you can see an example of the variables for our duct. H1 is half of the height of the duct at the inlet and H2 is half of the height of the duct at the outlet. The density at the inlet is rho 1 and the velocity at the inlet is v1. Remember that v1 is a vector quantity. 
as well as V2, which is the velocity at the outlet, and rho2 is the density at the outlet. In this first example, we will be solving for the V2 outlet velocity using the given data. You will have to use the continuity equation and assume that the outlet velocity will have no y component. You may pause the video here and resume when you are ready to see the solution. Using the continuity equation of the inlet and the outlet, we can simplify the integrals and then simplify it again taking the integrals into an algebraic form and solve for v2. This gives us a velocity of 40 meters per second and remember that it is a vector quantity but that it is only in the x direction. The second equation which governs incompressible flow is the momentum equation. Seen here, on the left, you can see that there is also a part of the momentum equation that is differentiable with time. And given our steady flow assumption, that will go to zero. For the purposes of our examples, we are also going to assume that this is an inviscid flow. And therefore, the F viscous, or the viscous force, from the fluid will go to zero as well. From here we can simplify the equation as all of our examples will be in 2D. And this will leave us with our finalized two-dimensional equation. Reviewing the momentum equation we have the density, the velocity vector, the normal vector of the control surface, the pressure on the surface and the surface normal. As you can see in the diagram, the surface normal and the control surface normals all point outward away from the control volume itself. And it should be noted that when we say to use the surface normal, control surfaces are a type of surface and will be included within that contour integral. Now that we have gone over all of the variables in the momentum equation, we can simplify it assuming that the inlet and the outlet will only be along the y-axis. In this example we are going to calculate the pressure on the walls of the duct. You will need to use the given data with V2 which we solved for in example 1 of 40 meters per second. You will need to use the continuity equation the momentum equation, and Bernoulli's equation, which has not been covered in this video. First, we input the given data into the momentum equation, as we have already used the continuity equation in the first part of example one. In this example, we're going to assume that there is constant pressure along all surfaces, including the walls, and we're going to assume that there's linear geometry along the length of the duct from the inlet to the outlet. We must also take into account that the pressure component of the momentum equation will be a vector solution. Simplifying the pressure component of the momentum equation, we get that it is the length of the surface multiplied by the pressure multiplied by the normal of that surface. We can calculate the length of the walls using Pythagorean's theorem, and we can get the normal for the walls through simple vector calculations. From here, we can input the equation for the pressure part of the momentum equation, taking into account that we must also use the pressure 1 and pressure 2 at the inlet and the outlet. In order to solve for these pressures, we must use Bernoulli equation since we know V1 and V2 and we will assume that P1 is atmospheric pressure. Under this assumption we can solve for P2 in which we get 100,000 pascals. We can then input 
the variables p1 and p2 into our momentum equation and solve for p3 and p4 which we said before are equal by symmetry. Using these assumptions we get the solution that the pressure on the walls is 99,000 pascals.